Good morning, everybody. Good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Ever since their introduction in Generation 7, regional variants have become a mainstay feature in the Pokemon franchise, allowing Game Freak to revisit old fan favorites with a new coat of paint, and even introduce new forms and evolutions even when in games like Legends Arceus where you normally wouldn't expect them to. And while regional variants may not be as drastically different as Mega Evolutions, sometimes just changing a type or an ability is all that certain Pokemon need in order to become relevant again. So let's take a look at which Pokemon benefit from them the most. Surprisingly, despite being the region that introduced regional variants, in Alola, very, very few of them feel like an upgrade to their original versions. Alolan Sand Slash is only marginally better than the original. Alolan Raticate adds pretty much nothing new to the table. Alolan Dug Trio is equally as bad as Cantonian. Wow, it almost feels like most of these are just here to give Gen 1 Pokemon more attention. But <laughs> that's crazy. When has Game Freak ever done that before? But there are a few who made remarkable improvements. Probably the simplest one to highlight here is Muck, a Pokemon who had fallen out of competitive relevance almost entirely after Gen 3. It was a subpar wall that suffered from what many would like to call four move syndrome, meaning wow, there are literally only four viable moves that you can run on this thing. With Alolan Muck gaining the dark typing, it not only now has one of the best defensive typings in the game, only being weak to ground, but it also gets far more usage out of moves like Knock Off and Pursuit. Rest in peace. It really is impressive how much better this Pokemon is than its Cantonian counterpart for how barely different it is. They have the exact same base stats, and despite Alolan Muck gaining two new abilities, in singles you'd probably still want Poison Touch, which original Muck already had. Where Alolan Muck really shined was VGC though, where it can take advantage of its secondary ability, Gluttony. In VGC 2017, Alolan Muck was a force to be reckoned with as Figgy Berry restored a whopping 50% HP in Gen 7 only, which would basically nearly fully heal Alolan Muck any time it got to half HP. This meant it could pretty much knock off any two Pokemon on your opponent's team for free, if not more than that. It also has Power of Alchemy, which is an ability that sounds a lot cooler than it actually is, but oh well. Another Pokemon who benefited mostly from a type change and nothing more is Alolan Marowak, my oh my, how the mighty have fallen. Marowak used to be an absolute titan of strength in Gents 2 and 3 before it was exposed for being the one-trick orphan it really is. And looking at Alolan Marowak's stats, you really shouldn't expect any difference. It still has a horrid stat distribution and not a ton of great moves, but between Lightning Rod and its new typing, it now has three immunities compared to the original's one. But forget about Lightning Rod for a moment, because Alolan Marowak also has Rockhead. Which, again, is not new, its base form already had that. But combined with the insanely powerful move Flare Blitz, which it will sustain no recoil from, you suddenly have a super scary wall breaker when holding the Thick Club. Shadow Bone is also just a remarkably good signature attack for this Pokemon at 85 base power. Much better than Bone Meringue and Bone Club from the original, that's for sure. Up next, we have the only other Pokemon from Alola to benefit from its regional form, and that Pokemon is Ninetales. Yes, you heard me right, turning a Pokemon into an Ice-type actually helped! Well, Fairy, too, but still. If Professor Turo came from the future and told me that Ninetales, the sun-setting demon of Gen 5, would one day be the most irrelevant weather-setting Pokemon in the meta, I would have told him, Screw off, bro, you're literally dead, how do you know that? But alas, it's true. You could nearly write a novel about the fall of Cantonian Ninetales over the last four generations. But as for Alolan Ninetales, this Pokemon started off great and has only gotten better as Game Freak continuously finds new ways to buff the Ice type. Funnily enough, Alolan Ninetales kinda started the buff Ice Train back in Gen 7, having access to the insane combination of Snow Warning and Aurora Veil, which is like the craziest payoff any Pokemon can get in one turn, maybe ever. That's like getting paid an hour of overtime just for showing up at work in the morning. Alolan Ninetales literally just wins by doing nothing. And with Hail changing over to Snow in Gen 9, Alolan Ninetales can make itself into a semi-decent wall with a respectable defense stat. But that's what one great move and nine extra points of speed will do for you. It's not a lot on paper, but that's the difference between a top-tier Pokemon and a bottom-tier Pokemon. Starting with Galar, though, we begin to see much more drastic changes made to regional variants. Not just in terms of typings and abilities, but some Pokemon could now finally evolve through their regional forms. So, yes, obviously regional variants definitely say Pokemon like Farfetch'd and Corsola, who know how the evolutions. Even though, competitively speaking, these two still aren't that great. But, hey, main story? Knock yourselves out. At the very least, the Pokemon are finally usable. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about these guys since it should go without saying that an evolution almost always just makes you better. No need to elaborate on that too much. Another fairly obvious one that I'm not going to spend too much time on is Galarian Darmanitan because, well, I don't know what else to say because it's just flat out broken. A choice band as an ability. I hope you're happy with yourselves, Game Freak. And if that wasn't enough, he also has the ability to turn into the version of Frosty the Snowman from hell. 
So striking him from the record, the Pokemon who likely got the biggest upgrade in the Galar region would be Moltres. Yeah, you probably expected Galarian and Articuno here, didn't you? Well, unfortunately, Articuno losing Ice didn't do as much for it as many expected, and, well, to be frank, in Gen 9 so far, Cantonian Articuno has proven itself to just be better than its Galarian version. And as for Zapdos, well, the Kanto version is a lot better, so not much to discuss there. But as for Moltres, the Galarian version seems tailor-made for the Devil's format, peaking at 12% team usage in Sword and Shield Series 9 VGC. Any time a Pokémon cracks double digits, you know it's a good one, even if it's for a brief period of time. First off, being Dark-type is like a cheat code in doubles, as it lets you ignore all the pesky pranks or users roaming around. Fiery Wrath is also just a slightly tweaked version of Rock Slide, which is always good to have in VGC, and thanks to its natural bulk in tandem with the Dynamax mechanic, it was an incredibly scary weakness policy user. Dynamax also allowed Galarian Moltres to convert Fiery Wrath from a 90 base power spread move, which in reality is only 67.5 power since spread moves get nerfed by 25% in doubles, to a base 130 single target attack. And in singles, Galarian Moltres has the rare combo of two great setup moves in Agility and Nasty Plot. And honestly, with his ability Berserk raising a special attack when you reach half HP, you may not even need the Nasty Plot in some scenarios. Basically, this Pokémon just has a lot of options compared to the Kanto version, especially in the doubles format. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. It's free, and you get to learn way more about Pokémon, so why not? Moving back in time to the Hisui region, though, this next Pokémon I wouldn't say was necessarily saved by its regional variant, but it's definitely been able to keep itself relevant with its existence. And that Pokémon is Arcanine. Unlike the other Pokémon we've discussed so far, there was never really a point in time where Arcanine stopped being good. And I'm not just saying that because he's my boy, you can literally go look at his stats across the many generations. Oh god, he just hit NU in Scarlet and Violet. Look away, look away! <coughs> well, that point aside, who would have ever imagined that adding Rock to a Fire-type would actually make it better? I guess, in fairness, Mag Cargo and Colossal didn't give us a ton to look forward to. But Hisui and Arcanine has made it work pretty well so far. Despite having two double weaknesses in ground and water, and five less points in speed than the original, Hisui and Arcanine has been tearing things up on both sides of the meta. In singles, it's seen as an extremely powerful wall breaker thanks to Rockhead allowing it to run both Flare Blitz and Head Smash recoil free. And in doubles, it is currently dominating the post-DLC meta. While Cantonian Arcanine generally dominates the VGC meta at the beginning of most generations, unfortunately, it basically becomes obsolete as soon as Incineroar becomes legal. Because, well, it just does the same thing Arcanine does, but better. And with Fake Out. No, I'm not mad, why do you ask? And with its mortal enemy Landorus already making a return, and Incineroar only being mere days away from joining Gen 9, Arcanine had pretty much already fallen off. But Hisui and Arcanine completely transformed the way this Pokémon was used competitively, pivoting from its traditional role as a supporting Pokémon to a full-fledged attacker. Terra Grass and Terra Fairy are also commonly used to help Hisui and Arcanine navigate a metagame full of moves they would normally be weak to. And with Terra Blast, it can even dispose of common VGC staples like Urshifu and Iron Hands. And in a way, Terrastalization has helped Arcanine reclaim its original signature move of extreme speed, as Terra Normal makes it a threat against nearly anything that doesn't resist it. While it's still relatively new and counterplay is still being developed, the amount of wins it's already racked up is beyond staggering. Also hailing from the Hisui region, we have to discuss Zarowark. While its success is nowhere near Arcanine or some of the other regional forms I've covered in this video, it was a much-needed upgrade for the Pokémon. Univan Zarowark is a Pokémon that always felt like it should have been way better than it ended up being. It's a solid, pure Dark-type Pokémon with Glass Cannon stats and an ability that lets it disguise itself as another Pokémon in your party. In theory, this should be one of the scariest Pokémon to see on your opponent's team. But that's just the problem. You can see it. And because of that, Zarowark lacks the explosive surprise power it needs to be truly amazing, especially considering its relatively shallow move pool and how frail it is. With the Hisuian form having two immunities, it can more easily take advantage of its deceptive illusion ability. It has ever so slightly better balanced stats that allow it to outspeed more threats and hit just a tad harder, and it doesn't have to fear the incredibly common move U-turn in singles. It's still not going to be your first choice in VGC, far from it actually, but I'd say it certainly holds far more potential than its original version did. Very briefly, I just want to discuss Hisui and Lilligant as well, because hot dang Victory Dance is like the craziest signature move to have. Unfortunately, this Pokémon does face quite a few checks though, which prevents it from getting as far up the tier list as I imagined it would. But it's still a substantial upgrade from Univan Lilligant, who has always suffered from lackluster typing and a criminally shallow move pool. Honestly, just having Victory Dance and Close Combat alone makes this Pokémon leagues better. 
Two forms that couldn't be farther apart from each other on the tier list, though, would be Samurott and its Hisuian form. Univan Samurott, cool design aside, has almost nothing to bring to the battlefield competitively speaking. It is painfully average in every way imaginable, and kinda sits in this awkward middle ground where it neither excels as a sweeper or a support Pokémon. But Hisuian Samurott somehow is able to do both. With Ceaseless Edge, it excels as a spike-setting lead, and you might even be able to get a few stab knockoffs in if you're lucky. Or you could take the opposite approach and go for a hyper-offensive Sword Stance set that takes full advantage of its ridiculous ability Sharpness, boosting the power of its cutting moves by 50%, which includes Razor Shell, Ceaseless Edge, Aqua Cutter, Sacred Sword, and more. This thing is an absolute beast in more ways than one, and may very well be the Pokémon that benefits the most from its regional form. Well, maybe if we exclude a certain pair of normal ground-type bears, but as I said before, those are evolutions, so you kinda expect them to be better. Ursa Luna and many other cross-generation evolutions may end up getting their own video in the near future, so look out for that. But in order to see it, make sure you subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.